Hey guys, my name is Christian Taylor. Welcome back to Crayler Made, and today I want to take another look at Dynadot to see if it's still a good place to buy domain names. You may notice that it's been a while since I've talked about Dynadot on my channel. They were last featured in my 2019 domain registrar comparison video, but in my updated 2021 comparison video, I chose not to include Dynadot. Several people have asked me about this saying, hey, do you still recommend Dynadot? What happened? You seem pretty high on them in your 2019 comparison, but they're not even in your 2021 comparison. And to be honest, that's mainly because I've always seen Dynadot and Pork Bun as very similar. So I've kind of rotated them back and forth over the years, but Pork Bun is cheaper than Dynadot. And with them filling very similar spots in the market, is it worth paying a small premium to use Dynadot? I mean, the short answer is yes. Dynadot is an ethical quality domain registrar that's not gonna overcharge you for stuff you don't need. They have great customer support, and overall, they're a wonderful place to buy domain names. Dynadot's specialty is definitely domain names. They're not somewhere you would go to have everything under one roof. So for example, if you want your domain, web hosting, and email hosting all in one place, Dynadot is now going to be the place for you. And we're going to talk about that more later because yes, I am aware that they do offer web hosting and email hosting. So we're going to talk more about my thoughts on that later. But I would say that Dynadot's specialty is definitely domain names. Their claim to fame is their advanced search tools available on their website. You can use their AI system to kind of get domain suggestions if your domain is taken or search multiple domain extensions at once. It's nothing super groundbreaking. A lot of registrars offer some sort of search tool like this, but I do like the tools that Dynadot has to offer. It's especially useful for finding a domain name that incorporates your name, because if you have a name like Christian Taylor, well, ChristianTaylor.com is already taken. So Dynadot has kind of helped me find alternative options that include my name and are still a cool domain name, like it's ChristianTaylor.com. I've never thought of that before. Dynadot recommended it. I think it's kind of cool. Dynadot is very reasonably priced. You can get a .com domain for $8.99 a year and Whoish protection is free. That is huge for me. I will not ever recommend a domain registrar unless Whoish protection is free. So Dynadot checks all the boxes there. Not to mention $9 a year for a .com domain is very reasonable. Namecheap, who I also speak highly of, is charging $13 a year for a .com domain. So Dynadot already is saving you four bucks a year over Namecheap. You're gonna pay a couple Couple cents or a couple dollars more than pork bun depending on the TLD extension you pick but I would say the Dynadot panel is definitely cleaner it's a little bit simpler to manage stuff pork bun is a bit overwhelming to me I've always thought their panel is like blah it's just like this fire hose of information Dynadot has things laid out a little bit more intuitively what's not intuitive though is the Dynadot checkout process if you choose to pay with PayPal Apple pay or anything other than actually keying in your card number on the checkout screen. For whatever reason, the process works where you'll choose PayPal and then click submit order and it almost looks like the order is done and submitted, but you were never taken to PayPal. And you have to actually like copy this link and paste it in your browser and then make the PayPal payment. I mean, it's not the end of the world. It is perfectly fine, but it is definitely quirky. I do really like that at Dynadot, you can return a domain name. It's not a guarantee. They do have a certain amount of domains they can return return per month or per year, but you can actually see the metrics for this on their return screen and they'll tell you if there's a waiting list to return .com domains or .net domains. So if you have a typo or if you register a domain and the next day you're like, ah, oh, why did I register that? I think it's kind of goofy after I slept on it. Dynadot will let you return that domain name for a small fee. The Dynadot app is clean and simple. Not many domain registrars have an app and Dynadot has done there as well. You can access chats support, you can buy domains, you can use Apple Pay, you can also fully manage domains and change name servers and do anything you could do online in the app. It's pretty neat. Dynadot also offers 24-7 live chat support, and they offer phone support from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Pacific time. So this is better than Porkbun. Porkbun only offers 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific time support, period. Porkbun offers both phone support and live chat support, but if you are an international user and you're on the other side of the world, how are you supposed to get support? You'd only be able to get it in the middle of the night, and for that reason, I think Dynadot is a great option for international users. 
They are lacking in some TLDs. They don't support .to or .ch or some of the TLDs that I wish I could get there. They don't support it. So you will have to go to a place like Porkbun or Namecheap for some of those TLDs. Also, another quirk that bugs me is Dynadot does not support physical two-factor authentication keys. They do support Google Authenticator and SMS text messages as a form of two-factor authentication. And this is great. I use Authy and it works just fine with Dynadot, it's like a Google Authenticator alternative that works with the same standard. That's what I use. It's fine. It works. I know my account is secure, but I do like the convenience of using a physical security key, and that's something that both Namecheap and Porkbun support, but Dynadot does not. I would really love to see them add support for physical security keys in the future. Now let's talk more about having everything under one roof. Should you consider buying VPS hosting, email hosting, or the website builder from Dynadot? Well, to cut to the chase, it's a no on all three. Let's start with the VPS hosting. Dynadot is charging $10 a month for a one gigabyte VPS. Already off the bat, this is a hard sell. When you can get a one gigabyte VPS from DigitalOcean or Vulture or some of the top indie data centers out there for $5 a month for one gigabyte, Dynadot is already double the price. Now this is not the end of the world, sometimes being double the price is justified. In the case of Cloudways, they are charging $10 a month for a one gigabyte server, but you're getting it through DigitalOcean and Vulture, and on top of that, they're adding their proprietary management panel to help you back up your WordPress site with one click, or have staging environments on WordPress. This is Cloudways we're talking about. Now Dynadot doesn't do any of that. They charge $10 a month for a one gigabyte VPS, which by the way, you cannot scale up or down. A one gigabyte RAM VPS is all you're ever gonna have at Dynadot unless they add more options later. And they use Centora, which is a free open source management panel that I'm not a fan of. It feels like cPanel and WHM, but really watered down or like the beta version of it. I don't know, I just don't think it's very smooth. Does it get the job done? Yes. But is it acceptable to just get the job done at that $10 a month price point. No, I mean, I expect a really smooth management panel, a really clean experience, and I'm not seeing that with Dynadot. If they wanted to go for the budget market and charge three to $4 a month for a one gigabyte VPS, all right. I could get behind that, but at where they have it priced in the market, I just can't recommend their VPS hosting. Dynadot also doesn't offer shared hosting, which I think is a little strange. The majority of users are gonna be happy with shared hosting to go with their domain name, just something they can use to run their WordPress website. And if Dynadot offered some decent shared hosting, plus email hosting, plus a domain, they would be a force to be reckoned with. Now moving on to Dynadot's email hosting, it is just quirky. It starts at $16 a year and only gives you 30 megabytes of disk space, and that's honestly not a great value. It's like this weird hybrid of web hosting and email hosting. It's like, is it shared hosting or is it email hosting? When you go to the panel, it has an edit website button. And when you click that, it's telling you, hey, you can upload some basic files and host a static website. So is it web hosting or is it email hosting or is it both? And that's not all. Their online email client looks like it's from the Stone Age and Dynadot email hosting does not support IMAP. That's right, you're gonna have to use SMTP and POP3 if you wanna link it to an email client or email app, which is honestly unacceptable. I would not recommend Dynadot's email hosting in its current form. I do believe the Dynadot team is working on revamping the email hosting, so it'll be really exciting to see what they come up with, but in its current state, I would not recommend Dynadot email hosting. Stick to Namecheap private email hosting, Google Workspace, or Fastmail. I've got an entire video comparing Comparing that that you can watch over here. Now, the Dynadot website builder, should you use it? Well, I gotta say, this is their most solid product they offer besides domain names. It's not bad. It's not amazing, but it's not bad. And at the 10 to $30 a year price point, it might be worth using if you're just really a Dynadot fan and you're itching to try it out. I will say you can get a solid looking website out of it and it's pretty intuitive. I personally think that you should stick with the mainstream website builders. This would be Wix, Squarespace, or WordPress, because there's so much support and help available for these website builders. But if you're on a really tight budget and you really like Dynadot, you could give their website builder a try. It's not for me. I generally wouldn't recommend any 
indie website builder, but again, it kind of gives an experience similar to Card. You can make a basic landing page with it, and it's very reasonably priced for what you get. So at the end of the day, do I still recommend Dynadot? For domains, absolutely. Dynadot offers competitive pricing, a clean and simple experience, and 24-7 support. I also really like their app. It's not something that I use often, but I can see they put a lot of work and attention to detail into it, and I'm really glad that they offer it for mobile users who want to quickly grab a domain name on the go. As for holding everything under one roof, I can't recommend Dynadot for that, but I'm really optimistic at what the future holds for them. I just love the ethics and the culture at Dynadot, and I think that they've got a bright future ahead of them if they kick it into high gear and start catching up some of their other products, like their web host and their email hosting, spice it up a bit, make it more competitive, and wow, Dynadot is going to be a seriously tempting choice to keep everything under one roof. I am actually including tutorials for how to set up your WordPress website using a Dynadot domain in my online course. I'm including Namecheap, Porkbun, and Dynadot in that course to start. So Dynadot is definitely one of my three top preferred domain registrars and definitely still worth considering. If you're curious about my online course, I'll have more information for that linked in the description below. But what do you think of Dynadot? Would you use them for your domain names? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you like this video, do be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss when I release new videos. With that said, I'll catch you guys next time.